testing in general, and then we're going to emphasize field day, and then Doug's going to go over uh, in some more detail the uh, N1MM software. So that's what we're going to talk about, field day specifics and N1MM. Okay, <clears throat> why contesting? Europeans call it radio sport. It's a competitive activity. The contacts made during the contest contribute, uh, let's see, contribute to a score by which stations are ranked. And contest sponsors public results in magazines and on websites. You may remember when we did the Virginia QSO party, we asked you to post your score, even if you made only two, two or three contacts, but annotate with Virginia, I mean with Vienna Wireless Society, and so uh, that helps. And it just gives us a little publicity. Here's kind of the key point to remember. There is no international authority or governance organization for this sport. Each competition is sponsored separately and has its own set of rules. Remember that. Okay, here's some general rules that you'll have to know about. One is beginning and end times, and you may remember Virginia QSO party had a quiet hours where you had to be off the air. Uh, it depends on what mode you're going to use. Some use all, some don't use them all. Uh, the bands, some may be VHF only, like this uh, past weekend's VHF contest. Power levels are like weight classes in boxing or wrestling. You have QRP, uh, you have 5 watts, you may have 100 watts, you may have higher than that. Uh, and then the key thing to remember is what's the contest exchange for that particular contest. And remember, there's no central organization, so they're all different. Sometimes it's serial report and a number. Sometimes it's serial report and uh, signal report and power. Sometimes it's your location, uh, your grid square, your CQ zone, your ITU zone. And as in field day, we're going to find it's the class or category and location. We're going to be 5A in Virginia. <coughs> Here's some popular contests, uh, field day, and remember for field day you can also operate from home. Home is one delta generally if you're plugged into the wall. Uh, you can operate mobile, one Charlie. Uh, you have CQ DX contest, ARRL DX contest, state QSO parties. Uh, John Shell wanted me to mention this CWT, uh, CW Ops test. CW Academy holds a number of these mini contests every Wednesday. And while most of the guys are, are going pretty fast on code, there are a number that are not. So you might want to think about those. This last one is not a contest, but I thought I'd mention it for some of the people that don't know about it. It's a special event. runs July 1st to July 7th, and it's uh, 13 colonies. And if you talk to each of the 13 colonies, uh, you get a certificate. That's a nice certificate. So I mentioned that. Okay, let's talk about search and pounce in field day and running. Search and pounce basically means you tune for a station, you hear them calling CQ, you wait till they're finished, you call them, and you make your exchange. Search equals tune, pounce equals call the station. It may be good if you're looking for multipliers or you're on a band that might not be open, but it's particularly good if you're not running very high power then you have a better chance of working some stations with low power on search and pounce. Running means finding a clear frequency and calling CQ field day for long periods of time. Log everyone who answers. Run is good if you have a strong signal or the band is crowded and you get sort of a mini pile up going and you get a lot of stations calling you. We had, we had a good success with running uh, stations last year on field day particularly on 15 when the band was open and we have some pretty good antennas so uh, there may be there may be times where running is good and then running may die out on you. Yeah, Joe. Multiplier. We'll get the multipliers. You don't get multipliers for, I mean you only get multipliers for for uh, contacts. We'll get to that in just a second. Okay, the exchange for field day. <coughs> Remember, I said it was the category plus the section. Category is the number of transmitters and the power source. 
Three transmitters, for example, A equals club, B equals one or two person portable, C is mobile, D is home. They have a bunch of those. So as I said before, read the rules. The sections are ARRL and Canadian sections. For example, Maryland, D.C., North Texas, Arizona, Northern New Jersey, Quebec, you'll hear those. Our call sign is going to be Kilo 4, X-Ray Yankee. Our category is 5A, five transmitters, A is a club. Our section is Virginia Victor Alpha. And so <coughs> W1A, or w, we call W1AW, you're 5 Alpha in Virginia Victor Alpha. And they say K4XY, we QSL. You were 3 Foxtrot in Connecticut, Charlie Tango. And so that's the report. Question? Uh, more of a clarification. A is actually for emergency power, not for flow. Okay, my fault. That's why we have to pay attention to what the rules say. But, well, if A is for emergency power, okay. Yeah, which is what we're using. Yep. Okay. 100 or 150 watts. Okay. Uh, read the contrast rules. These are what the winners say. Check your equipment, including software. It's really difficult if you turn on for the contest and your antenna's not working or the radio won't work or your computer's crumped. Uh, understand the basics of propagation and plan the contest strategy. Uh, for example, winter bands open, winter bands close. Are the higher bands open or closed that weekend because of the sunspots? Make a band schedule if you want to, and make plans for rest and nourishment. Uh, somebody had a question on uh, scoring or multipliers. Joe. Question. question is what, what are multipliers? <laughs> In field day, multipliers are... I. No multipliers in field day. Okay. The, the N1 MM software will show you the multipliers. Scoring at field day, one point for a contact with anybody in any phone mode, you know, whether it's FM, sideband, whatever. Uh, two points for a contact made with CW or any digital mode. You may work the same station once for a point in in on phone, once for a point on CW, and once for a point on any digital mode on the same band. Which is why you use logging software. John. Two for using low power, under 100 yes. watts, so that's nice. Yes. Now I remember, remember I mentioned we put these into the software, we upload them to the contest site. You can also upload your scores to Logbook of the World, particularly, obviously, if you're operating from your home or from these other contests. That'll help you get uh, worked all states, obviously your DXCC, worked all zones, worked all continents, all done for you automatically in Logbook of the World. So the takeaway is if you're working the Virginia QSO party and you've worked four, let's say you've worked 40 stations, you upload that to the Virginia QSO party for your uh, entry, and then you also upload it to Logbook of the World, and you may come up with 20 states in in your I mean your worked all states. These are some resources. Uh, ARR has a lot of resources. If you haven't gone to this site, the WA7 BNM contest calendar is out there, they list every contest, every weekend, any place in the world. And they list it uh, every eight day segment. You can take a look ahead for 12, uh, 12 months out. Uh, and so it's real good. And uh, ARL Contest Basics is another good source. Okay, thanks Harry. Now I'm going to talk a bit about N1MM, and as Harry mentioned, that is the software that we use to log our contacts. Now, why do we need to do that? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, you can work a station, as I said, 
you know, once on phone, that means that a second contact with the same station doesn't count. Also, we have, uh, we're working 5A this year, that fifth station might be on any band in any mode. And that means that it's possible that a uh, station could encounter somebody that's been worked already by that fifth station or vice versa. And you need to know that that's going on. N1MM will tell you, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, we use it for field day, and we also use it for NAQP and other events. Um, we need to have all the stations on N1MM uh, because we can then find out if there are any uh, dupes that occur because of these possibilities I mentioned of the two different stations um, might be on the same band and same mode at different times. Okay, so N1MM records exactly what we need to record for these specific contests. So when you set N1MM up, you set it up for a specific contest and it records exactly the exchange of that contest. Um, and N1MM uh, appears as several windows on your PC, and we'll talk about the most important ones. Okay, so the most important win window, the one that you will spend most of your time in, is called the entry window. When you start N1MM, this window will pop up, and you can see it has several fields. Uh, it's going to be configured for field day, so it knows that uh, you're going to record a call sign, a class, and a section. And uh, as Harry mentioned, a section in many cases is a state, but not, all, uh, not in all cases. So there are Western Pennsylvania, and Maryland in DC is one section MDC. So each station really needs to have a list of the abbreviations, especially if you're a sideband station. So if somebody tells you that they're in, in Maryland or Maryland, D.C., you know how to abbreviate that. Uh, and that happens to be MDC. Okay. Uh, this first field, you notice, doesn't have a label. Uh, most of the time what you're putting in here is a call sign, but there are other things that you can put in there. If you're not connected directly to the rig, you can enter the frequency, you can enter the mode, and uh, you know a few, a few other commands are possible. Let's see. Um, over here you'll see, on most of our stations, you'll see one column because the uh, phone stations will be set up uh, within 1MM told that they're only going to work phone and the same thing for the CW stations. The fifth station, however, uh, has license to operate any mode, so it will have three columns here and one way to uh, switch modes or to switch uh, bands uh, is to uh, click in here or alternatively you can tune the rig and if you are connected with cat control, which is the way of connecting a radio to a computer, then N1MM will see that that has changed and will highlight the appropriate uh, uh, band and mode in one of up to three columns of these uh, band maps. Um, let's see. Most of these buttons are going to be used by the digital stations and by the CW stations to send the exchange and to send the CQ and so on. Uh, for phone stations, you can do that with recorded uh, messages, but I haven't seen the phone stations want to do that. And it, it could be pretty disorienting if there's one voice calling CQ and then another voice, you know, actually do, doing the working of the station. A couple of, of uh, buttons are interesting. If you uh, uh, type the wrong thing in here and just want to start over, you can, you can type wipe or press wipe. Um, and uh, if you are uh, trying to work through a pile up and you can't get the station but you want to come back, you can store the information and it will appear on the band map, which I'll show you uh, later. Okay. Well, let me 
let's do a quiz, all right? So you've walked into the tent, and you've talked to the band, to the band captain, and you're in front of the computer, and you're ready to go. What's the first thing you do in N1MM? Okay, you log on with your call sign, and you can do that in two ways. You can type OPON in this window, or you can press Control O, and up will pop this dialog box in which you enter your call sign. All right, and that's our way of keeping track who di did what on field day. All right, so do that first. And then you are ready to go. Let's see. If you are a, a CW station um, or a digital station, you want to check the run or search and pounce um, radio button because these messages differ between run and search and pounce, and they will change appropriately when you select uh, what you're going to do. OK, so logging a Q-cell. Uh, typically, when you get going, um, the focus will be on this box, and that's where you're going to put the call sign. OK, now you need to enter the rest. Uh, there are a couple of, there are a few ways to get from this box to this one to this one. I would recommend that you get used to using the space bar in N1MM. Now, in um, field day, space bar and tab work just the same way. In some other contests, um, there's a piece of the exchange like a 599 signal report that's always the same. Uh, the space bar will skip over the fields that you probably don't need to mess with, and the tab always takes you to the next field. So they, they mean slightly different things. Space bar is probably the, the best to uh, get used to. So you type the K6BFA space bar, the 1F, the space bar, and the section, which in this case we're saying was uh, PAC. Now, you're going to see some new behavior this year that you're probably not uh, used to. If the station happens to be one that we worked last year, N1MM will know what class and what section that station sent last year. It's going to fill them in automatically. So as soon as you type in the K6BFA and press the space bar, it would fill in the 1F and the PAC in this particular case. Now, uh, this year isn't last year. They may have changed their class. They may have changed their section con uh, conceivably. So you do have to check that, uh, that it's correct. But most of the time, it will be. Now, uh, this is called the call history. And you can find that in the N1MM documentation. Um, there's a published call history file for field day, and I took a look at it, and I picked, you know, like five call signs we worked last year, and none was in that published list. Okay, so I said maybe that's not so helpful, and I generated a uh, call history file from our last year's log. So that's, that's what we're going to install. Yeah. And if it's, if it's pre-populated from last year, and they've changed. How do you how do you change their class? Say their class this year is three alpha instead of one F up there. How well, do you change it? Click on it and type in what it should be. How do I back up? Uh, use the mouse is the easiest way. Okay. Now, um, yeah, Keith. Um, is there is there going to be a, uh, <coughs> a quarantine or whatever where we do not do any N1MM upgrades for the week before field day? Okay, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, now we've we've suggested that everybody uh, install the latest N1MM uh, as of right now. Now, it's possible, and they did this to us last year. Uh, last year, they 
released a new N1MM on Tuesday before field day, and they put something in it that we needed. All right, so if that happens, then uh, we'll deal with it uh, with a thumb drive, you know, on Saturday morning. But for now, um, before Tuesday, which is when they usually release these things, uh, turn up N1MM if you've already got it installed, and it will look around and say, oh, you don't have the latest. Almost nobody has the latest because they keep updating it. And uh, let it go ahead and update, and you should be on the correct version. If anybody is not on the correct version, we'll fix it uh, as part of checking things out on, on Saturday. Okay. All right, so you've put in the call sign and uh, the class and the section, and you pressed enter. Uh, that should put, put it in the log. There is a log window, which is very handy, and I suggest you display it. How do you display it? Well, uh, you notice here there's a menu item that says window. Uh, from that menu item on the entry window, you can open any other window that you need. And I would suggest, as I said, that you uh, enter the log window and, you know, make sure that things are going in as you expect. Now, it's possible that you'll fill in something and it won't go in the log. Why not? Because N1MM knows that it's a mistake. And then it will display an error message and give you an opportunity to correct it. But it's also possible that you'll make a mistake and you'll enter something that N1MM thinks is valid, but it's not what you intended. So uh, if that happens, uh, you can go into the log and you can, oops, sorry. Um, you can just double click uh, the field that's wrong, uh, the call sign or the exchange or the section and uh, type in the correction. Okay, I told you I would tell you what a dupe looks like. So um, we just worked K6BFA. If uh, you put it in again, this is what the screen will look like. Uh, notice that uh, this is gray, and you see this red dupe indicator. Now, in field day, all the call signs are going to be colored either blue or gray. Blue means it's good to work. Uh, gray means that it's already been worked. Uh, in some contests, there are stations that you can't work. Those are also gray. But on field day, you can work uh, any station that's out there. And by the way, if you happen to work somebody who's in uh, Spain or someplace and they've jumped into field day, their section is DX. Okay, we've done this, we've done this. Okay, let me talk about the band map and about spotting. Uh, this year there's going to be a spotting robot that will be listening to the CW bands. And the, sp the robots will identify the call sign of stations calling CQ. Uh, they'll also report the signal strength and the CW speed. And those will show up uh, on the band map window. Also, I told you that you could come back to a station that uh, maybe had a pile up that you couldn't break and you want to try again later. You can press that store uh, button that I indicated. And um, then if you bring up the band map, it'll show you the frequency. And if you have cat control, you can click on this and it'll take you to that frequency. And um, for CW, if you, uh, well, in any case, uh, for CW, you can go to the spots via the band map. And uh, there's also something called the spectrum window, which works only on some radios. And uh, go to John Shell station, and you can see that working. OK, now, if you tune to a frequency where there is a spot, either because you stored it uh, or because uh, it was spotted by the uh, CW spotter, 
you may see a call sign up here. And again, uh, it will be either blue or gray. If it's gray, well, s either you or somebody else has already worked that station in that mode on that band, and so it's time to move on. Uh, but if it's blue, uh, you want to go ahead and try to work him. And to bring this call sign down into this field where you want it, you press the space bar. OK. Uh, let's talk about some of the other windows. I wanted to keep this down to reasonable length. Um, network status is an interesting window because in addition to tell you stuff you don't care about, like the other station's IP address, it tells you what band they're on, who last did the op on, and what mode they're working. So for uh, the fifth station in particular, which will want to know what else is going on so it doesn't jump on top of each other. And by the way, the rules prohibit two stations on the same band and mode at field day. So uh, the fifth station has to worry about that if it goes outside of, of the set of digital modes. Uh, the network status window will, will tell. Uh, the telnet window is what uh, the CW stations will use to connect to the spotting station. Uh, there's a score summary window that lets you know what the current score is. Uh, there's a window called talk to another station that lets you do exactly that. and It'll pop up a window on the other station. Uh, the spectrum display, as I said, only works on uh, some radios, uh, ICOM 7300 happens to be in the set, flex radios, uh, some K3s with difficulty can be set up to do it. It depends on the options in the K3. What that does is give you an N1MM window, which is actually a pan adapter view, which obviously has to be derived from the uh, a transceiver. And within that window, you can set a threshold, and then you can click tune with uh, a control up arrow and control down arrow to the next station that is not gray, that is, it has not already been worked, and exceeds the signal strength threshold. So that's, that's pretty fun, but as I said, not all radios can do that. Okay, also, N1MM, as you've come to appreciate by now, is a fairly complicated piece of software. Uh, there's a lot of documentation. Uh, any of you folks interested in digital modes, uh, the best way to run digital mode software for a contest is to set it up to run within N1MM. And that, and when you do that, the digital mode and N1MM work together. So, if, for example, you do a RIDI contest, it'll give you a window where the RIDI information is printing out, and all of the call signs will be identified and colored with the N1MM colors. So you know whether it's been worked or not, and if it's a contest that has multipliers, it'll color it according to uh, whether it's a multiplier or not. So in, it, in in N1MM in general, uh, when you see a call sign, it'll be blue uh, or red or green. Uh, blue is uh, not a multiplier, red is a multiplier, and green is a double multiplier. So um, for other contests, you, you may see those colors. OK, um, what else? What questions do you have about N1MM? We worked the N1MM station in field day. <laughs> worked them on sideband. I actually met N1MM in Dayton, uh, 2013. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. If we bring out that it's okay to work a du duplicate. Yeah. Sometimes you just. Get rid of me that way. It's quicker. It doesn't hurt anything, in other words. Yes, it does not hurt if somebody. If you're running, and somebody you've already worked calls you, you want to get get him out of your hair. The quickest way to do that is probably just go ahead and work him again, and you can log it, and it it won't count, but he'll go away. It's and that's more 
typically more efficient than saying, no, you're a duplicate, go away, because then you might want to have a discussion. Okay, yeah. It's also a, a good technique if uh, somebody's got, uh, you've contacted before, but they didn't get all the information, so they duplicate. But you're, I mean, you're a duplicate, but they, they didn't get it as a single hit. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, I've had to yeah. do that a couple of times. Yeah, that can happen. Yes, Lee. One thing is, of course, we, we mentioned weird sections. There have been very strange sections for Canada, California, and I know sometimes people have a hard time. What the heck is whatever it was in Ontario, right? Because the abbreviations don't, don't necessarily match right. the description. They so change. it's kind of important to probably have a list or something available so everybody knows. Yes, Lee's comment is particularly any uh, phone station should have a list of the sections. So if somebody uh, says they're in northern New Jersey, you know how to abbreviate that. There are a lot of uh, states that are split in that kind of way, and California has some you know, an interesting collection of different uh, sections. Yeah, Keith. Yeah, to, to clarify my <clears throat> previous concern, my concern was actually that uh, a new update might uh, either be incompatible with the earlier update or might just completely break the software altogether. And that's not something you want to ha have happen just before field day, obviously. Well, one of the rules of a network uh, setup is that all of the stations have to run the same version of N1MM. Now, N1MM is pretty good about not releasing things that uh, break the software, but uh, you know the, um, the current release that's out today uh, sh should have all the features that we need unless we get a surprise, so stick with that and it should be good. Okay, anything else? Yeah. Yes, Mike. Is it, is it true that once you sit down and start using M1MM, it's pretty intuitive after you get past the first two or three? Yes. Yes, so M1MM is designed for efficiency. So, yes, it takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, um, once... Once you get used to it, it goes quickly. I'm going to put it that way. Okay. okay, there's also a mode called InterSends Message, which you can turn on and off if you're a, a CW or a digital station. And uh, then you just keep pressing the Enter key, and it uh, um, sends the appropriate message. So if you um, are running, and you don't have anything filled in, and you press enter, it'll send CQ, all right? Uh, once you've typed in a call sign and press enter, it'll send the exchange. And after uh, you've entered um, the exchange information and pressed enter, you know, it'll uh, you know, acknowledge and send CQ again. So you can give that a try if, if you want. It's called enter sends message in the configuration. Okay, anything else? All right, over to you, Bill. Well, thank you, Doug, and thank you, Harry, for that. Uh, there's a question back here. Go ahead. Announcement. Announcement from Scott. Go ahead. Uh, we have a, uh, a silent key consignment item. We're going to take to Manassas, but I'll offer it tonight. It's a Yezu 897. Uh, it's a late model of it. It comes with the mic. It's a great radio. It's one of the effect, one of the radios I use at home. Uh, we will let it go for 450. So if anybody in the club's interested tonight, because otherwise it's going to Manassas tomorrow. Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what a prince. Not an auctioneer. I won't take it down. All right. So Scott has a a uh, donation that is given to us from Silent Key, a uh, Yesu FT897, complete with microphone. Yeah. And the manual is. Uh, easy to download uh, for 450 tonight. Take and he'll either deliver it or make sure you get it. Oh, you have it here. Okay, you can take it home with you tonight and be on the air before midnight. Uh, otherwise, it's going to the uh, Manassas Hamfest. So anybody who's listening online, if you're still listening, Scott, 
Katie for EBL, look him up and give him a, send him a message quickly. Uh, are there any other announcements? Brendan and Pete. Oh, wow, we've got a bunch of them. Something different at Field Day this year. You will see these devices when you make, when you pull into Berkeley Park. Off of 123 and you make that first left into our campsite, these will be in strategic locations. If you choose to run them over and park where these signs are, I will find you like if you don't sign up for the ADA event next year. But the reason we're putting these in strategic locations this year is because we're moving the GOTA tent and the MCOM tent from where it was on the left-hand side of the road when you turned in to the right-hand side of the road as soon as you turn in so that when you first turn into the park there, the GOTA and the get-on-the-air tent and all that stuff is literally going to be the first thing our visitors see. So that whole area, probably 50 or 75 yards, is going to be blocked off for parking. So if you're used to parking right there, you're going to see these signs. And I bought this stuff. And if, you, if I find tire marks on it, I'm going to find your tread wear pattern, and I am going to find you. All right, that's all. <laughs> Anybody got that message? Okay, Pete, you want to say something? I found the price list for the garments here. So if you picked up your garment, come see me with your money. Thank you. And I, and I will find you. <laughs> Pete has your call sign. Okay. Well, listen, thanks, everyone, for being here. If, uh, if you haven't done the sign-up sheet, please do that before you leave. Uh, thanks to all of you who presented tonight who had words of, of wisdom for us. Looking forward to a great weekend next weekend. Everybody get some rest this week because we're going to need you to stay up and work hard all night long and all day the next day. Thanks again to, to Rebecca, KM4RDS, for the food. And uh, did, YMA, do you have a question? You have no volunteer for tomorrow? Toward the table. Yeah. Working the table tomorrow, Mike. Mike, I think you have a volunteer back here. See him. A A Z. C A A Z. And uh, so we'll see you in two weeks here at Thoreau Intermediate School. Hamfest, they have the award ceremony for the Virginia Cuso party. If you do have certificates, get, get certificates for the for our participation in the club. So uh, come down. Okay, so tomorrow at the Hamfest, the uh, awards for participation in the Vienna Cuso party, and Kevin says show up if you can and uh, watch the watch the uh, award ceremony. All right, thanks everybody. See you in two weeks right here at Thoreau Intermediate School.